Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and today we are going to talk about one of the most interesting and talk of the town topic which is automating application with artificial intelligence. Everybody is talking about artificial intelligence, big companies like Google, Microsoft, Amazon or whatever you name it, everybody is really talking about artificial intelligence. So we are going to talk about automating application with artificial intelligence. So let's get started. Finally, AI is here. Is it? Well, no. AI is here with us for more than decades, but just that we are seeing the terminology being used a lot just these days because a lot of companies are really working on it and a lot of people are really talking about it and now it's kind of getting talk of the town. So, well, it feels like AI is right now available, but not. AI is there for more than 20 years. And you would have seen artificial intelligence already applicable with our cell phones that we can type something and it automatically tells you that there is a mistake in your typings. And similarly, if you just type in the Google search like execute automation or whatever you like, it automatically brings you the suggestions based on the search that you made and also as you can see the first one the execute automation is something which is there because I have searched before and the suggestion is automatically coming based on my search patterns. So these are some of the things which is available with us for more than 10 years now and I have been using this internets and cell phones and I have seen this happening most of my time. So artificial intelligence is something which is already available but just that now we are trying to make it available even further with different levels so that we can make use of it. So let's quickly understand what artificial intelligence is in much simpler word just not the Google search auto search feature and keyboard thing. Well artificial intelligence is an intelligence demonstrated by machines in contrast to the natural intelligence displayed by the humans and other animals and computer science AI Oh my god, this is so much of text you can learn from Wikipedia and I just copy pasted it here so that you can also read this and understand how things work. Well, this is not what I'm going to talk about today. We are going to make artificial intelligence more simpler, more consumable fashion, not just getting into most of the theories that I have seen so many presentations so far. Well, in essence, AI can be achieved with the help of data. That's the first most important thing. I mean, a lot of data. With these data, AI need more compute power to process the algorithm to understand and replicate the patterns. I mean understand and replicate the patterns. So this is what is artificial intelligence doing it. So basically it is going to take the whole data for us and then it's going to compute the data so that it can be more understandable and more meaningful and then it is going to give us kind of patterns so that we can understand and use it for further prediction purpose. That's what everybody is doing. Google is collecting all the search histories that we have did so far and then it's going to process it, it's going to compute it using some algorithms and then it's going to give us in a very nice and neat understandable fashion things. Well it is predicting in one sense that this is what we're going to search next. So that's really cool. If it is not then it is going to make a correction on its own search algorithm or machine learning and make it more available to us. That's what is all about this artificial intelligence thing. Well, there are more than that and that's what we're going to talk about. So some of the most common example of AI is vision, speech, knowledge, language and search. So you can see that the vision is the image processing algorithm. Knowledge is a map complex information and data in order to solve tasks such as intelligent recommendations and semantic search. Language, as you will know, what is it? Speech, again, whatever speech that you are giving. Hey Siri, how are you doing today? I'm doing really good. That's one of the most important speech things that we have been seeing each and every time Microsoft, Google and Apple are always trying to pitch in. Well, Amazon Alexa is one more thing. And then search. We have seen the search API being embedded in most of our applications. Well, that's exactly what is this. Well, these are some of the parts of the AI in a simple sense. Well, let's hold and start talking about AI in automation testing because we're not really getting into what is artificial intelligence all about, but we need to talk about what is artificial intelligence and how we are going to achieve this in our automation testing. Well, how is the AI going to transform and change the life of automation test engineers whereas automation by itself is to change the life of a human tester? So, I just pictured a little more interesting way of how the tester's evolution is happening. I mean, way back 
10 or 15 20 years before where there were only manual test engineers they used to do testing and they know how to test an application based on the business requirement or some sort of documentation and they come up with some good ideas and they create a test plan test cases and they execute the test well then come all these automation test engineers always sitting with computers writing some codes and replicate what the user actually do and they just kind of write the code so that it can be more easily achievable by reducing the human effort again i think this is the kind of guy i am sitting over there who do all these sort of stuffs right now but right now the testing is kind of evolving in another further level where the testing is taken into this particular guy the bots or maybe an artificial intelligence guy who is trying to steal some of our most common routine problems and so that he can make our life easier and that's what he is pitching in so he is going to understand the pattern of whatever automation test cases or whatever common stuffs that we do so that he can replicate and make our life even further easier so basically as you can see they are trying to reduce the human effort from the left hand most side guy through all the way to the right hand side where the sophistication of a test engineer has increased and he has actually reduced the burden of what human being is doing well you can ask me what happened to the job security well i don't know so let's talk about some of the ai testing providers so we have different ai testing providers right now on the market something like test.io test.ai and then there is something called testim sas lab mabel and these are some of the interesting testing providers I have just keep on researching and I did some research personally and I could see that there is a really really good benefit out of it while automating an application using these kinds of testing provider. Well, you can see that it is just a record and playback and it understands the whole object, the patterns and it also uses some machine learning stuff so that it knows that there is a change in the object in an application and automatically remaps object identifier so that it can identify the element in much easier and sophisticated way that's really really cool it's all being done automatically using some of the machine learning and then it's trying to make our life even further easier by reducing the number of flaky codes automation tests that we write every day so basically these automation test providers does three things they first identify the element or the object using the recording that we do in the browsers that we are recording in. I guess they are mostly browser extensions. They just record everything, the user actions, and they store into their database. And then they try to perform an action by just running the test. If you hit the run button, it just runs the test and then it sends out the report for you. It's pretty much like how Catalan Studio or Visual Studio Coded UI or Selenium is doing things for us. So these things is exactly what being done using these providers as well but the good thing is if an object identifier is being changed then these providers automatically using machine learning try to remap the object by certain patterns and then they try to run the test without any errors so you don't really have to worry about the object changes so these object changes in the applications ui are automatically taken care and the test execution runs without any problem that's really really cool so we are going to see this in action and understand how things work and we'll see how the power of machine learning and ai has really shown a growth currently and maybe in few days who knows there is going to be kind of cognitive service which is provided by microsoft there's going to be some automation testing service will be running so that you can just plug and play within your application using the service consumption and you can make your life much easier. Maybe Selenium is going to do that. Who knows? So let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to Chrome browser. All right. So this is my browser. And I'm just going to automate an application using what is called as testim.io. So testim.io is an intelligent uh, test automation service provider. So what they do is this. So they use machine learning to speed up the automation testing execution. Well, you can see they have some customers here and they have a nice portal which does the recording of stuffs here. Whatever action that we do in the website, it automatically records there. And then it automatically changes if there happens any change within our application and what is called as machine learning does these things for us. So they basically say goodbye to all the flaky tests and start thrusting your automation testing. Nice word. And then 
You can also seamlessly integrate the test with these kind of collaborative tools or CI integrations and you can run the test on different browsers. That's really, really cool. And I have already signed up within their website so that I can create some tests and run them. So I'm again going to log in this time and I'm logging in and I have already created a test case to run the test. Well, this time we are going to make use of a new test so that we can see how it works. So for recording the test, I have already executed my application in my local machine, which is the Execute Automation Employee app. Well, this application is available in our GitHub, so you can just head over to github.com slash execute automation and there you can see something called as Execute Automation Web App. So this is the application which I have been using for many different courses and I'm going to use the same application for this particular application as well. So before we start running the test, basically once you hit this record, it is going to start recording, but it will also let you know that you need to install a extension, this one, the test team editor. So this editor basically uh, records the action that you are doing over there. So I'm going to make use of the same test team editor this time to run the test. So I'm going to hit this uh, toggle record button and it's going to ask me the URL that I need to record this time. So I'm just going to copy this URL which is the uh, local service provider or the local application which is running in my machine. And then I'm going to hit create test. So it has opened the browser for me. And you can see on the left hand side, it automatically shows the setup as the URL. And if I hit the login button, it says click login there. And then I'm going to enter the username as admin and password as admin. So it has automatically typed that as well and hit login button. That's cool. It has clicked that and it has captured that as an image as well. And then I'm going to hit this uh, employee list, create new, and then I'm going to create a new employee. So I'm just going to say an employee name as Prashant and his salary is 30,000 and the duration work is 12 uh, and his grade and his email ID as Prashant at EA.com. That's cool. And then I'm going to hit create button. There you go. And then I'm going to hit log off to end our test. So these are the action that I'm going to do for recording our test and then executing the test. Well, I'm going to stop the recording. You can do some assertions if you want. You can write the custom course and all those jazz is available within this particular application as well. Right. So I'm going to save it and I'm going to call this as uh, EA test two and I'm going to hit OK. There you go. So it's saving all the tests within their own cloud so that it can be retrieved and run from any place. And currently the recording has been done in the Chrome browser and this is the configuration. Well, you can create any number of configuration you want and I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to run this test in incognito mode and see if the test really runs fine without any problem or not. So this is a normal test, right? This is exactly what's happening in Catalan Studio or Visual Studio Coder UI or Selenium. It exactly what happens in those environment as well. You can record it and then you can run it and the test runs as expected over here that is happening currently and this is not a very big deal at all. Where is machine learning coming in and where is artificial intelligence here? This is not artificial intelligence, right? This is a normal test thing. Well, that's why I tested this application to modify the code a little bit to see if really the artificial intelligence is coming in picture or not. So what I did is this. I went to my application source code and then I have modified some of the code from here. So basically what I did is this. I went to the applications view. So you can see there is a button called create new to create a new employee, right? So what I did is I just tried to modify this create new to something like make a new employee, right? So I have completely modified the text of the button because that's what it has captured here. You can see in the EA test. So for the create new, it has identified using this create new uh, button. And if you see the properties, it used the uh, options such as uh, create new stuffs there. And there are some other properties for the target element. I guess they use the parent element one to identify these particular controls. And then there is a parent one and then there is a parent two who is the body and who is the other stuff and then who is the parent three so they have identified using different parents and these are the target elements they have to identify this particular create a uh, new button right so what i did is this i just modified the uh, text over here because they can use the text 
and they may be using the xpath who knows how to identify the controls so what i did is this i have also removed this particular uh buttons property in a different way so i modified the code to use uh, a different kinds of structure maybe so i'm gonna create under a new div right so the xpath has been changed so i'm gonna cut this code and i'm gonna paste it over here and then i'm also gonna remove the uh, button css property here so that it cannot use any properties and then uh maybe it uses the test align uh, as left so maybe i'm going to use right so i have modified that and you can see the xpath has been changed the text has been changed the control has been changed from buttons to uh, some other controls maybe it's a hyperlink uh, in terms of the css at least and then i guess most of the thing has been replaced so that our test can fail so this is what happens in our classical test that we are doing currently right so if anything changes automatically the test will fail and the test will report us there is some kind of error. So, oops, I guess there is a problem with the application because the application has not been closed properly. So uh, let me open the SQL server and clear the data. All right, so if I hit login and if I just try to do admin password and hit enter and go to the employee list. So you can see it's a, a make new employee. So there are two make new employee. Maybe we can replace this guy from make new employee to delete employee. I'm gonna save it and I can just refresh it. So it is delete employee and this is a make new employee. So delete employee is not gonna do anything, right? So that's basically a different controller. So maybe I can also remove this controller here. I'm gonna uh, save it and then I'm gonna refresh it again. So if you hit delete employee, nothing is gonna happen basically. So only if you click this make new employee, this is gonna bring in this particular stuff. So basically, if you run our normal classical test phase, it is gonna fail because the whole thing has been changed. The xpath has been changed, the button control has been changed, the CSS has been changed, and even the location of the application has been changed, right? So everything has been changed. So let's quickly run our artificially intelligent test tool to see how it works right so let me do this oops let me run the application again and let's run our test and see how it works so I'm just going to run this test in the incognito mode and I'm gonna hit run all right so it has opened the application it's logging in and now I expect it to click the make new employee there we go. The test has failed. You can see that it is trying to click the delete employee over there, but it couldn't able to click that particular stuff because the control has been changed. But it could able to click the delete employee at least over there. And now it is trying to search for the name over there and it is trying to see if it could able to identify. So basically what happened here is this. It is just trying to identify the control using this particular uh, text box and it couldn't able to click that so if i go to the uh, editor over here it says that the element not found i know what is the reason for this particular failure because this particular control has pretty much the same identification property as like this particular control and that's the reason it has been failing so i'm just gonna remove uh, maybe there is no such thing so btn uh, primary uh, i can probably remove that particular control from here I'm gonna save it and uh, this is gonna be align a little bit here I'm gonna save it and then if I try to run this test let's see what's gonna happen so basically I have just removed uh, the control to be a little different so that it can run without any problem so oops log in there we go you can see that now it is able to click the test and it is automatically trying to enter the stuffs and it is working fine. So you can ask me where is machine learning here? So there is some pattern, there is a different kinds of object being identified to click the particular control and work through them. So basically they have a different kinds of heuristic way of searching the stuffs over here. They have a different patterns to identify the controls. If so, if it couldn't able to identify 
using these different kinds of elements then it automatically mix and match the elements to identify the control and then run through the test so basically the machine learning and artificial intelligence in these areas as you can see here is basically it is just trying to identify the controls within the application using different properties and it is trying to mix and match the different kinds of patterns on its top, on its bottom, on the left hand side, on its right hand side, in the central and which particular tag or control it is in, do it is in and then it is trying to identify heuristically that this is what is the control going to be and then it's trying to click and try to perform the operation. So as you can see within our code while we try to make these two control more or less same it could able to click only the delete employee even the text is not correct and even though that's what not we are looking for but that's not really meaningful right because there is no way that it can identify a control whereas you just change the text of it but you change the behavior of it it doesn't really work there but we want this particular make new employee which is the create employee has to work as what we are looking for then for sure we have to make these two control a little different so that they can identify and they can perform an action over there and even these kinds of control if there is any change selenium or catalan studio or code ui cannot actually identify the control because they are completely different complete xpath or text has been completely changed and replaced whereas in artificial intelligence world it is automatically working well that's really cool i guess it's not a machine learning but they claim that's what machine learning is all about well, just tell me your thoughts are and tell me what is the things about artificial intelligence and what are the different kinds of stuffs you know are going to be coming in the artificial intelligence world. I'm also talking to different kinds of companies right now and understand how the artificial intelligence being done. And there is a good friend of mine who is Joe Colinto, who is also trying to add or create a conference on artificial intelligence and see how to get an idea of artificial intelligence based automation testing world. So that's cool. That's really, really cool to see there are different kinds of communities starting to talk about it and making the automation test to happen with artificial intelligence. But this is still in an infant stage. As you can see here, there are some failures, but maybe in future, these bots may overtake the human and improve the way the automation testing is currently happening. So once again, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.